If you'll take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We've been going through it. Uh, I think this is our fourth Fourth message in Corinthians, and then, you know, look, at 16 chapters. Okay, it's going to take a while, but, you know, we'll, we go as, as God, God directs in this. We actually will go into the beginnings of chapter 2. Um, I wanted to begin simply by reading the end of, of chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised thing and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Paul has been writing to this group of Corinthians. This bit is going to be a little bit of looking back at what we've talked about, but, but it, it, you need to know context to understand the passage that we're looking at. Paul had rebuked the Corinthians for divisions over spiritual leaders. And there's other reasons for divisions, but we'll get to those when we get to those. They were saying, oh, I follow Paul. Oh, I follow Paulus. I follow Peter. I follow Christ. And so, so he gets into that. And those who've been following, you know, you know, yes, I remember that message and stuff like that. And just, you know, he's like, oh, why are you doing, you know? And, and his, his main point is it's, it's about Christ. <laughs> it, it's not about, about me, as Paul would write, or Paulus, or Paul, Peter, or, 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 or anybody. And it's about Christ. It's, it's not about these people. We're just servants. It's about Christ. If you're looking at who is speaking, and we all have our favorites, but if you're looking at who is speaking, you're missing the one they're speaking about. And so that's what he has been emphasizing over and over again. Don't look how well the message was presented and miss the message. Um, and, and so this is where the people were, and this is why he rebuked them. He loved them enough to rebuke them. Without God enabling us, we would never get it, whether it's skillfully presented or not. And so, so he goes and says, don't, don't look what these leaders can bring to the table, their oratory skills, their persuasiveness, their drama is how they do it, or emotional, you know, stuff. You know, get your mind off that. Listen, listen. God will confound the wise, the religious, the self-made, with the simple message of the gospel. Again, all of this right up to this point is, is looking back at what we've talked about. That, that it's just, it, with all the wisdom this world can bring, they could never arrive here. But through the simple message of the good news of Jesus Christ, which because it's so simple, the wise and the powerful don't get it. Don't get it. So, so God will confound the wise. He will confound the religious. He will confound the self-made with the simple message of the gospel. But also, God will confound the wise, the religious, the self-made with you and me. This is not going to be a, this is one of those passages of scripture, you look in the mirror and you're reading it and reading it about yourself, you're going, that's not very flattering. What are you saying? Well, here it is. Brothers, and yes, that includes sisters, think of what you were when you were called. 
And then he tells you, not many of you were wise. Thanks. That makes me feel better about myself. You, you weren't wise by human standard. People looked at you and they said, ah, whatever, you know, average. Not many were influential, powerful. Not many were of noble birth. You know, you know, we got people in here, and I'm one of them that likes genealogies. Like, hey, my great, 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 great was, you know. And so, but I was like, you know, you, you can do that, and you're going, oh, I'm still nobody. Not very, then that, this is not one of those messages that you walk away going, hey, I'm somebody. No. <laughs> this is one of those passages that when God came to me, I was a nobody. He makes it even worse, you know. Um, see, when God called you, what did you have to offer? And, and Paul's point is nothing. Nothing. He goes on to say you, you weren't wise, you weren't influential, you weren't noble, you know, things we just read. And, and then he goes on. It makes it worse. God chose the foolish things. Okay, so he's like, okay, who can I get? There's a fool, Randy. Come on up. You know, it's just like you're. Yeah. And again, it's not meaning you're a fool, but 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 that that in this world's view, like why would that guy get picked? You know, Jesus's disciples. I mean, the religious leaders. That's who you should get. They already know people. You know, they they know people. They they get, they know how to contact with people. They're really smart and all this other stuff. Jesus didn't choose them, but just a bunch of blue collar fishermen and others. Even people that, that people would, would scorn, like Matthew, the tax gatherer. God chose the foolish things to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one can boast. No one can say, hey, you know, God's so glad. I, God is so lucky to have me on his side. I mean, you know, what, what was it when we were called? Who, who, what did you have to offer? God chose you. What, what's you? Well, this describes you. Foolish, weak, lowly, despised. The nobody. You know, this world right now is so big on pumping you up to say, oh, you're great. Oh, you're. Now, listen, 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 listen. Who's being written to? The average Joe. Slaves. Yes, there were exceptions. There were people who were of noble, you know, and, and so there, but, but for most of all, it was just your average person that, that most people would look over. Most people would go into the room and not pick you. But God did. But God did. Now... Because it's, we were foolish and not wise and we're, you know, all these things, it has nothing to do with you. It is only because of him. It is only because of him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. You didn't bring anything to the table. You didn't go, like, oh, God, I'm going to pick him because they're really, really, really special. No, God picked us and then makes us special. It's because of him that you're in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is, and what it describes what it is, re, the, our righteousness, our holiness, our redemption. Therefore, it is written, let him who boasts, boasts in the Lord. And let, let me break that down. Because of him, he's your all. Regarding salvation, He's called our righteousness. You are justified. What, what is that? That's one of those Bible terms or whatever. But it means you're made right in his sight. And again, here it is. He picked someone who was not right in his sight because that's everybody. Um, 
And in his sight now, because of Christ's payment of the cross, he sees you as righteous. You're sanctified. He is our holiness where, yes, in God's sight, we are as if we are the righteousness of Christ. But guess what? In my normal everyday walk and all that, I got a long way to go. And he says, I'm there for that too. Not only are you made right in his sight, he is making us right. Our righteousness, our holiness, our redemption, you are glorified, meaning you will be perfectly right forever and ever and ever and ever. He's because of him. Now, here's the, here's, here's the question. What do you have to add? <laughs> what can you add to that? No, he did it all. So all we can do is boast in him. Let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. This comes from a passage back in the Old Testament, a prophet, uh, Jeremiah. And he says this, this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts, boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercise kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. Listen, we, we've got nothing to boast about to say, look at me. Even to things, like if you're talented and all that, you can't say, hey, look at me and my talents. No, who gave you those talents? Who gave you the drive to, to, to make those talents excel? Again, it all goes back to God and, and only him. Only he should get the credit. Now, Paul uses this himself as an example. And this is chapter 2, the first part. Because again, you know, Paul could say, hey, look, I was this and I was that. He could have shown his credentials and all that, but instead he says, listen, listen, I don't want you to trust in me. When I came to you, I didn't come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaim the testimony about God. I don't want you to trust in me. I I want you trusting in Christ alone. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you. For, 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 for I resolved to know nothing while, with, with, while I was with you except Christ, Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. I, I wasn't all that good. <laughs> But it wasn't about me. It was about Jesus. See, when we come and we try to say, oh, I want to witness and all that, but I'm not exactly sure what to say. Listen, listen. If you truly have believed on Christ Jesus, you have your story. You have how did Christ save you? And you just share that with others and stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm not eloquent. I might. Da, da, da. This is what Paul's saying. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Do you know how many times, how many doors I've knocked on, how many people I've approached to share the gospel? Do you know how many times I wasn't scared? I've always been scared. It's not about me. It's about trusting Christ. Paul's saying, I came scared. He goes on. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with demonstra the demonstration, a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Listen, listen. It's not because of my power of speech that you became a convert of Christ, but God's power alone. Now... Jesus sends the disciples out. And again, the disciples, they weren't highly educated. They were people that nobody else would pick to start a religious movement. <laughs> and they go out and they share, start sharing the good news and, and all that. And then they come back to Jesus and they're like, oh, wow, the demons, you know, they went, oh, wow, they could have been, oh, you know, and they're, they're, they're all excited and all that. And then Jesus, it just shows us Jesus' heart. He says this, at that time, Jesus says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned 
and revealed them. And he's looking at his disciples, these little children. Yes, Father, this is your good pleasure. Because, listen, God is about, and the kingdom of God is totally the opposite of what this world is. This world says, oh, you've got to be powerful. Oh, you've got to be influential. Oh, you've got to be rich. Oh, you've got to be this. You've got to be that and all that. And Jesus says, no, you've got to be humble. You, need to, you want to be the first in my kingdom? Be the last. He totally flips it. Over. The kingdom of God is totally opposite of the kingdom of this world. God's wisdom and power turn the world's wisdom and power upside down. You think about it. The people who were around in that first century and seeing the followers of Jesus, they were trying to make a name for themselves. And the only reason that we know a few of their names is they're the bad guys in the Gospels. <laughs> And some 2,000 years later, these, these ignorant fishermen, but because they were with Jesus, what they, humanly speaking, started, we're still talking about it 2,000 years later. God's wisdom, because it wasn't about them, it was about Christ. He likes making nobodies into somebody. Remember this, this whole passage says, when you were called, what were you? Well, you weren't wise and you weren't noble and you weren't this and you weren't you know, all this other stuff. But listen, listen. But what he makes you, he likes making, he likes to pick nobodies to, and then make them somebodies. This is all throughout scripture. First of all, Paul. Who was Paul? I, 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 I was not only a nobody, I was an anti-Christian. Uh, I mean, talk about the, the person you wouldn't pick. Going into the Old Testament, Abraham. He came from a pagan family. Who would pick him? Moses. Well, I, I'm the stuttering fugitive. I mean, I've got a criminal record, and I can't speak well, and I'm supposed to go and lead these people? And he did. Gideon, one of the judges, the angel shows, oh, you valiant, mighty warrior, you know, and, and he's like hiding, you know, and trying to get some grain and all this other stuff. And, and, and he says, listen, who, who am I? I'm from the least tribe, and I'm the least of my family. And the least of the least. Yet God used him to become that mighty warrior. David, when the prophet and judge Samuel came to the house of Jesse, Jesse is David's father, and he came to them and says, I want to check out your sons. I, 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 I need to see who's going to be the one I'm going to anoint. And so David call, I mean, Jesse calls all, all, all of his sons, except David. He wasn't even worth bringing in from the field. But now we know David. Mary. We're coming into the Advent season. Look at her words. This is after her, her own cousin Elizabeth said, who am I that the, the mother of my Lord would come into me? You know, and, and, you know, it's like, wow, you're special, Mary. And Mary's like, I'm not. Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. If he, him who boasts, boasts in the Lord. My, my soul glorifies in the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant, that, that I'm nothing. From now on, because, of, because he takes the nobodies and makes them somebody, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. 
for the mighty one has done great things. Holy is his name. Now, now look what he did. Remember when I talked about how everything in this world, that everything the world says is really, 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 really important and what God says isn't, but God just totally flips. You know, his kingdom is totally opposite. Look how he flips it. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He's performed mighty deeds with his arms. He scattered those who were proud in their inmost thoughts. The people who said, I'm somebody, become nobodies. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but lifted up the humble. Again, turning that around. He has filled the hungry and the, with good things, but the rich he sent away empty. You know, Mary realized that when God makes somebody something, it wasn't because they were great, but because they weren't great in their eyes. And now here's the last one I want to speak about, being a nobody. Now you can get mad at me now. But he was somebody. I mean, he was somebody before the world existed. You're right, you're right. He came like a nobody. Think about it. Born to lowly parents. Born in a, a minor town. Born, his birth was announced by people who would be the last people you'd listen to. Shepherds. And, and he received gifts from foreigners, and foreigners was not a good thing. I mean, it, when God came into the world, he appeared. Now, he was somebody. Trust me, he is the someone. I mean, okay. But he came as no, a nobody. Read back in the prophets. Read this passage last week. Who has believed our message? Whom has the Lord, arm of the Lord been revealed? He, speaking of Jesus to come, he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a, a root out of dry ground. Now look at this. He had no, no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. I mean, this is not how Jesus is portrayed on all the, whether, whether it be a, a series or movies. He's always like a head taller, always wearing the white with the blue shirt, you know. All, you know he's always like, hey, you, hey, that's Jesus. You know, everybody's looking. Hey, I can tell who Jesus is. He's the one head taller than everybody and looks the nicest. Back in Jesus' day, I mean, the people who would even talk with all that, now what did he look like? Judas, you need to point that out to us. So, so, so even the prophecies that talk about him saying, listen, there wasn't anything special humanly about him. And then we go to Paul's writings again. Philippians chapter 2. Who in the who is Jesus? Who, being in very nature God. Okay, so this, like I said, humanly speaking, he no nobody, but obviously he is, you know, as big as you can get. Being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. I mean, God could have made an entrance that though, and you know what? One day he will. <laughs> His next entrance, that second coming of Christ, it will be unmistakable who's here. You know, people who are atheists will become believers, but it will be too late. But when he came the first time, he made himself nothing. Why would he do that? He came to die. Being found as an appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because he had to die. If he came in all his power, he wouldn't have died on the cross. Because he came seemingly as a nobody, the religious leaders couldn't grasp it, and, and, and they had him crucified. Because he came as a nobody. 
Now listen, there, there's sometimes I look in the mirror <laughs> and maybe I'm a little too proud. Most of the times when I look in the mirror, I'm going, how could God use me? Well, as long as I think I'm something, there's a little hindrance there. God lets things happen to let me know <laughs> that apart from him, I'm nobody special. But with him, just like he did with the disciples, he made nobodies into somebodies that he's reached the world with his message. Let me ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. First of all, do you know him? I know about him. Not I've been in church all my life and I got all the facts and stuff like that, but, but do you know him? Have you recognized that you had nothing to offer? In fact, all you had to offer was your sinfulness, and that's why he died. Would you receive what he did for you? But now, now that he's done that for you, he wants to transform you to the image of his son and you will become a somebody. Not, not in this world's eyes of, wow, look at that person. No, no, no. But a somebody that will make a difference in the kingdom of God. That will reach people and Christ will use. That's the somebody I want to be. How is he working in your life? To humble you so you can only boast, boast in the Lord. Jesus, thank you. Thank you in your coming. You showed we don't have to have all the credentials. Because in your human flesh, in the worldly perspective, you didn't have any of them. Yet you are the only Savior. Apart from me, we can't come to the Father, you said. And so I pray for those who have yet to come to you, that they would put all of their trust, their hope, their faith on you, not themselves, not their goodness, because in your eyes, we aren't. And that Jesus, those of us who have received you, that God, we can never pat ourselves in the back and think that God's lucky to have me. But God, we, we are so blessed that you chose us, you reached us, and you are transforming us to make an impact that can last for eternity. Use us, Jesus. Like you used Paul. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Again, following the service, if you can hang around and help us put the Christmas tree up and uh, put other decorations away, um, just come on down and help out um, uh, following the service. God bless you.